Jam School Remix. Get ready to be a paper folding master and also read their freaking mind. Yep, dollar bill. And the crisper the better. I've actually been trying something a little bit weird, trying to learn how to do it behind my back. And I thought it would be fun to combine a little bit of origami with a bit of a guessing game. So I want you to think of an animal. There's a bunch of animals I'm learning, but I don't want you to think of your favorite because everyone will be like, oh, I like puppies or I like kittens or whatever. It's too obvious. So instead, we're going to be as random as possible while we do this. So I want you to start by thinking of any two digit number from one to one. I want you to, in your mind, take the two digits of that number, and I want you to add the two digits together, and then subtract that amount from your number. Okay, so now you have a new number. Okay, is it a two digit number or a one digit number? Okay, so take the two digits of that number and add them up to create a one digit number. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rattle off 10 of the animals I know how to fake. Whichever animal corresponds to the number you've selected is the animal I want you to think of. One will be a dog. Two will be a cat, three will be a three, four will be a turtle, five will be a bear, six will be a lion, seven will be a human, eight will be a teddy bear, which is different from a bear, nine will be a butterfly, and ten will be a unicorn. Let me get started. This might take a little while, but I'm going to try to build you up for hints. First of all, on a scale of one to ten, how much are you a fan of this animal? Four. Four. So you don't feel very close to this animal. Good. It's good to know. Have you ever touched this animal in real life? No. Have you ever seen this animal in real life? You have. All right, here we go. Hold that hand. You told nobody. I folded him. I don't know how pretty it's going to be. But I folded the animal and put it in there. Is that right? Is that pretty good? are two parts to this trick. Let's go with uh, how you did it behind your back first. Okay, I was folding the dollar bill behind my back, and you know what I made? I made this. <laughs> Which is not a butterfly at oh, all. Oh my god. So, the first part is, you pre-make a butterfly, and you just keep it in your back pocket. And the butterfly is great because it's a flat item that can stay in your back pocket at all times. Yeah. And then while you're back here talking and asking questions and just kind of BSing with people, you're able to pull it out and just put the other one in your pocket. You can do this standing up, you can do it sitting down, you can do it anywhere. And what the best part is, is when you pull it out, you have them put it right in your hand, you say, put your other hand on top, and then they're not even looking at it. And so meanwhile, this is already back in your back pocket. So here's the second part, the part where you have to make them pick a butterfly. But I don't have a unicorn and a teddy bear and a lion yeah. and all the other oh, animals yeah, I yeah. thought of. Uh, obviously, I just have the butterfly. So this is something we covered in a previous episode of Scam School called the Rule of Nines. No matter what two-digit number you think of, from 10 all the way to 100, it's a two-step process. Let's say you take the number 66. Yeah. You add the two digits together, 6 and 6, to get 12. Yeah. And you subtract it from the original number. 66 minus 12 is... 54. When that first step does is it makes whatever number you start with, it converts it into a new number that will be a multiple of 9. In this case, 54 is a multiple of 9. nine. Exactly. And 5 plus 4 will always get you to 9. That is crazy. Exactly. That is awesome. Exactly. So then you, you spin the yarn about how, oh, I know a whole bunch of different animals, and let me go through them. And so you hold up your hand, so you get them thinking of each number corresponds to an animal. What you want to do is rattle off the first ones really fast, and, when, and as you get near the end, the last three or four, be like, um, you know, a swan, and uh, cool, number nine yeah. will be a butterfly. Right, so now you you force them to come up with a butterfly as their choice, yeah. but it feels totally random to them. Yeah, the last part is all just talking. Just come up with some questions that kind of sound like you're fishing, but don't actually give away so much that it ruins the effect. Because mm -hmm. obviously, I said, you know, if I said, "Is it a bug?" and you're like, "Yes," well, then obviously, yeah. you know, I could maybe be making a butterfly behind my back. You don't want to do that. You just want to talk to them. Yeah, yeah. And then at that point, you're done, man. You just pull it out. Make sure to put it in their hand. Have their other hand cover it on top, and then have them reveal it. I recommend if you're one-on-one, -on -one, just say, you're thinking of an animal, open your hand. Because for you, you're the only one who knew and you're the only person I'm performing for. So you open your hand, you're like, it's a butterfly and you freak out. That yeah. means I hit everyone. But if there's a group of people watching, what I'll do is I'll say, before you open your hand, tell me what animal you're thinking of. And you'll say a butterfly. And then when you open your hand, everybody gets that moment of amazement when they see a butterfly right there in their hand. 
The only other tip that I'm going to give you is when you when you pull it out from behind your pocket, uh -huh. you'll notice that there's one side that's relatively flat yeah. and the other side that has a bunch of ridges. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the flat side is in your hand so that as I set it okay. in your hand, yeah. you get this because otherwise that looks less like a butterfly. The first thing you want to do is you want to decide whether you want predominantly this busy backside of the uh -huh. one to appear or the relatively plain front side. I found that the plain yeah. side actually looks more like a butterfly. The other side, the pattern's so busy it's hard to follow. You're going to fold the bill in half and give it a good crease right down the middle. Now you're doing this not so much because we're going to use that fold, but because it clearly marks the middle of the bill. Okay. Then we're going to lay it over and we're going to show this busy side. Did you ever make paper airplanes when you were a kid? Yes. So the first thing you do with the paper airplane is you fold everything down and you're gonna fold it right along that center fold, uh -huh. right down the middle. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put George on top, and we're gonna do kind of like that second fold. If you wanted a thin airplane, you'd always do a double fold, yeah. but the only thing we're gonna do different is when we fold it in, instead of folding it all the way over, we're gonna let that bottom flap come out there. It's the difference between doing this and doing this. Oh. There you go, okay. just like that. And you'll do the same thing on the other side as well. Make okay. sure that you get that one crease to go right down the middle. Next up, we're gonna flip it over. Now we're gonna take, we have this diamond pattern. We're gonna fold the diamond pattern. All the, this tip of the diamond should join this apex right beneath those two wing tips. There you go, get it all lined up and go ahead and do the creases on the top. And now we're gonna fold it back with a little head poking out like that. So just kind of like right about here? Yeah, there you go. And make sure you get those good creases. I'm gonna flip it over. Now we've got two wings and a head. These wings though are all the way flush. So we're gonna restructure them so that the wings go out from each other just a little bit. So I'm gonna separate out. You can see this is the original crease here. Uh -huh. I'm gonna roll everything forward so it doesn't quite get to that point, but it makes a line pretty close to that point. So you're starting like this, okay. and you want to undo these creases and roll it out just a oh, little bit. Oh, those See creases. That? Exactly. Was, okay, I you just it. want to roll the wings out just a little bit okay. and redo the creases. Okay. And then Got the last it. thing you can do is, if this is an extra tidbit. Already, it's getting pretty close to a butterfly. Yeah. To be honest, even if you just went that far and they said butterfly and they saw that, they're going to freak out. But I like to add that second double wing underneath. So we're going to flip it upside down, okay. yeah. and then we're going to take the tips here, and I'm gonna make this fold, say, right about even with that bill on top. There you go, just like that. Okay. And then same on the other side. And then we're gonna put a bit of a crease, we'll fold it forward, so you see how I'm putting a little bit of a jog in there? I, I went over this way, and then I folded it over this way. And now, look at that. That's definitely starting to look like a butterfly. Yes. The final piece, if you wanna do it, this is straight up just like making an airplane. You fold the wings up, and then just, okay. just give it a good crease. And now what you're gonna do, just like you would with the paper airplane, mm -hmm. you're gonna fold down. The smaller the jog, the better. Get it all the way across. So it's like I'm making a paper airplane to throw. What do you got? Butterfly. You got a freaking butterfly, bro. That was awesome. Huge, huge thanks. Go to one of my BFFs and all the magic, Mr. Andrew Maine. Make sure to check out this stuff and all of his incredible work. Nowadays, he's writing horror novels and thrillers and blowing our minds with things besides paper fold and magic. But the paper folding is still good. Scam School Remix brings you the best of our over eight years and 500 plus episodes of Scam School. You can check out the original episode this came from or dive into the complete Scam School Remix archives. You'll get so much knowledge so fast with so little time wasted. It's a high fidelity experience. It's like VR surrounds you, permeates you. It, I'm describing the force, aren't I? Like, it's, it's pretty much like the force.